everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. You're watching Agent on Duty with myself, Stacey Kerr, and my special guest today is actually another returning guest, Marcia Beaton. Hey, Marcia, how's it going? It's going great. How are you? Good, good. So it's been a couple years since we had you on the show. I know a lot's been going on in those couple years, um, but I wanted to bring you back because I wanted to talk about some of the initiatives that you're still continuing to do. And I wanted to talk a little bit about how the markets changed. I mean, a lot's been going on since I think 2018 was when we had you on. So do you want to tell the viewers a little bit about what's been going on in the real estate market? What have you seen? Uh, well, a whole lot. I mean, COVID's been extremely difficult to, to work around, but it certainly hasn't slowed things down to the point that, uh, that I would have expected. The market's still very, very hot. Uh, still is a challenge to get in, but I'm starting, starting to see it become a little bit easier for buyers. I was in last night on a, uh, an offer situation and we were the only one and the house was gorgeous. So I, I think there's a few of those opportunities that are starting to crop up, but the market is still very hot. So funny because, um, was it last Sunday? Um, I wasn't prepared to work and then, um, my clients called me and I was like, I called the agent because the offer date and time was like 2 p.m. that day. And I was like, okay, fine, I'm on this, right? For most people, if you are buying in the market right now, usually you're competing against nine to 10 people and it's been that way for years. So um, to have like no competition or like little low to no has been like such an anomaly. So if yeah. we're talking about positives about lockdowns, that's definitely one. Um, but yeah, it was crazy because I was actually able to negotiate. I haven't negotiated on a buyer contract, I say negotiated, um, meaning like being able to put in conditions or being able to ask for money off the price. But I was able to go in and we got 20K, 25K off the initial asking price, which I, my buyers were ec ecstatic. And we had been looking since last November. So um, with all the meetups, yeah, like it's been insane. Like we saw the trends were people were going in firm, no conditions and asking price. Then all of a sudden you saw the bump ups between 20 to 50K, then 50 to 80K. Then it like skyrocketed to like 120 to 150. Then we saw 220K. So it was just nuts. Like the way things have been evolving to actually being able to go into an offer situation and get 25K or just be the only people that you're like looking around being like, am I going to get punked? Like, <laughs> is this for real? <laughs> so that's what I'm yeah, it's yeah, just we crazy. Conditions last night, and I—I oh. I mean, I was writing it up, going, blow the dust off of these guys because I haven't yeah. been able to use them for a while. Oh, I know it's so insane, Marcia. How long have you been in real estate for? Going on a, about a decade. I—I've been full time for eight years, uh, oh. approximately now. But uh, yeah, we've we've seen a lot of changes in that time. <laughs> a lot. Oh, definitely. And it's funny too, because I know you have a son, Thomas. So compared to like, like being a new mom to like now, that must be like totally different as well, right? Oh, thank goodness. I mean, I'll give him full props. He's been really, really good about it. There's been days where, you know, it's been like, like he's upstairs right now and I don't hear him. He's really, <laughs> really um, adapted to the lifestyle, but it allows us the opportunity to go to the park and then do some work. And, and play together and then do some more work. So the flexibility is really good. I, I have loved it. And uh, it's, it, while it hasn't been easy all the time, it certainly hasn't been awful. It's, it's well, a good place. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you mentioned the park because when we do get back from break, I want to talk about some of the extracurricular activities that you've been doing mm -hmm. um, with your son um yeah. in your I want to say spare time again I've been using right. quotations a lot in this episode but you've been going above and beyond and I know that you focus most on the east end side so um a few uh, a few things that I really want you to share with the audience because being a real estate agent isn't always just about selling home it's uh, it's also about being a community ambassador so when we get back from break yeah. we will talk a little bit more about that so stay tuned guys Hey guys, welcome back from break. I am sitting here with my returning guest, Marcia Beaton, one of London's favorite East End realtors. So before the break, we were talking a little bit about the market and how things have been ebbing and flowing. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is that you are a realtor, a, a mom realtor. There's lots. 
Um, I'm a fur mom realtor, but not like an actual kid mom realtor. Here's my my fur baby. One of the things that I think is amazing is that you've been incorporating a lot of your community work uh, with your your son. Um, so did you want to unpack that a little bit for the audience? Sure. Um, I mean, COVID has taken away a lot of things from us or delayed a lot of things. And I, I really teach everybody. I mean, my son, obviously, but anybody who's, who's uh, watching that simply because we've been added uh, a challenge, we don't have to be stymied. We can find different ways to work around, to work within the parameters that we've got. So Thomas and I have gone out and I mean, the barrier to entry is really low for this. We got some grabbers, we got a couple buckets and some bags, and we go and we clean up a park or a pathway or somewhere uh, along a roadside. Uh, we're safe, obviously, but we just pick up the garbage and that gives him a feeling of control where he's got something that he can affect. And it also gives them something to be proud of. So, I mean, we've, we've now got neighbor kids that want to do it. We've got uh, some of his friends who have asked, you know, can we go with you? I mean, that's a great activity. We can be distanced. We can be safe about it. Still work within the parameters of the COVID restrictions and, and actually do something. Be outside. Thank you so much for taking care of our community. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about some of the other charitable things that you've done. Um, last year, when the pandemic hit, you were one of the forefront runners on masks. And then around Christmas time, uh, we did, we suited up as heroes um, for the Salvation Army. And then you also did a filter campaign. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about why, why is it so important for you to get involved in charities and how much are you raising and how does this affect the charities that you do help? Well, there's a lot of challenges for charities right now for their funding. Um, I don't know about what's coming from the government, but I imagine that there's some additional challenges there. People may not have as much to donate. I know a few are down this year. Um, one of my favorites is Child Can. I like to get behind them. They support families throughout the journey from childhood cancer diagnosis to recovery and beyond. Um, we've done a, a few things for it. I really did enjoy doing the, the dressing up as the holiday heroes for the Salvation Army. That was great. We did the, the, uh, the filter fundraiser. It's not exciting, but we, uh, we have a wholesale account through uh, one of the wholesalers here. And I was able to offer some really fantastic pricing on furnace filters. And then that money goes to uh, Child Can. So because that's ongoing, I'm not actually sure what the total is, but I think that we are getting upwards of about $1,000 for that one. And other things just pop up from time to time, bottle drives and whatnot. Um, but those are, hey, whatever we can do, every little bit counts and we're just gonna keep on working. Thank you so much for all that community service. I know everybody that gets involved, um, it, it is a lot of fun because I know you do the polar dips too. <laughs> So, we missed out on that this year. It was, I know. Uh, another thing that COVID has uh, forced us to pivot around. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of fun. And these, these events are super important to the charities. We rely on the community to support our businesses. And in my opinion, it's only right to give back to the community wherever it's possible. So if anyone did want to get a, on board with you with any of your community events, uh, like I said, they are a lot of fun. Uh, Marcia is no slouch when it comes to going all out. Um, so Marcia, how can someone, if, if you guys are watching and you want to take part in um, community cleanup, if you want to take part in an event that's a child can event, how can they get a hold of you? You can Google me, uh, marcia.beaton at gmail.com is the email address to use. Uh, you're welcome to call me direct. You'll find my phone number on the internet or 519-619-9852. And I'm always happy to talk to somebody who's like-minded who wants to give a hand, always. Okay, guys, we are going to be going to break. And when we come back, we're gonna, I'm gonna ask Marcia some more personal questions um, about real estate, about her clients and about some of the crazy things that she's seen. So stay tuned, we'll be right back after this. Hey guys, welcome back from the break. You are watching Agent on Duty with myself, Stacey Prayer and my guest today, Marcia Beaton. We've been dishing the dirt on uh, some of the things that Marcia has been doing. Marcia is a local realtor. She's been in the industry for over a decade, which 
I mean, obviously she must have got her real estate license right after high school because like, <laughs> look at that face. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we've been talking all about your community um, involvement with uh, child plan. We do know that you focus heavily on the East End, um, the Argyle yeah. area is usually, that's your jam, right? Um, I like to uh, I like to service the communities that may not get the the first attention. The East End is a really cool like I'm gonna give like props up to my East Enders because um, honestly it's like some when I first moved to London I'm trying to be very careful about how I say this. When I first moved to London people were like oh I don't want to be EOA and I'm like I don't know what EOA means like. So I'm from Windsor originally, <laughs> so I'm like, eh, whatever. Like we didn't, we didn't have that. So when I heard all about this EOA stuff, and then we were living EOA, I'm like, not as bad as like these people from Byron are making it out to be. <laughs> so I kind of like had a giggle, but I honestly like it's it's an interesting group of people. I would say an inter interesting mix. You get a lot of. Um, European families that have been there like since the the subdivisions were created. Um, my ex-in-laws were uh, Portuguese so there was a big Portuguese community which I love um, and then you see a mix of younger families so I think it's awesome that you're servicing this because when you do when you are able to get involved a lot of younger families do come out and participate and there is the like the spirit of EOA, I would say. Um, but I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about your experiences with serving in that area. What are some of the craziest things that you've seen in real estate um, that you can kind of share with the audience? Uh, you know what? And most of them didn't happen east of Adelaide. Um, I've got to say that I've, I've had some of the nicest people that I've, I've ever had. I've got... Uh, well, currently I've, I've got a, an estate that I'm selling or has sold actually. And I met with a woman of she's 98 years old. Wow. Um, this wow. woman was a powerhouse. I, I told the executors, I think she was an institution unto herself. That woman lived in her house since 1956 and uh, she was very proud of it. There's a lot of pride of ownership in the okay. East. Yeah. It's funny that you say that because we actually sold a house and I went in there, I, and I'm like, we sold a house. I'm like, I've sold many houses, but just this one house. <laughs> but yeah, no, there's so, there is pride of ownership. And it's it's one of those things where community is so big, but um, we did sell a house. It was someone who was moving to a retirement home and they had owned the house since uh, I think it was 1935. Um, nothing had been changed. Everything was in pristine condition. Like, I was literally taking pictures because they had the, like, the phones on the walls, like, the, I know they had some antiques, like, obviously, they, I was, I wasn't alive in 1930, so I don't really know, but they had one of those phones where, like, you crank it and, like, it was, like, huh, I wonder if that sucker still works. I bet you it would be. Um, but one of the things that I think is so funny when you sell homes in the East End, most of them, like, if you're selling older people's homes, they always have workbenches somewhere with a vice grip. And I'm like, I have never always. used a vice grip. I'm like, what is this vice grip for? But yeah. We're going to have to start again. <laughs> I know. I'm like, do I need a vice grip? Every single older home that I've gone in, it's like, it's like there's a checklist. I go through mentally and it's always like one of the old school pencil sharpeners. That's usually like Absolutely. in the workshop. You usually see the vice grip and there's usually different sizes. There's like little vices and then big vices. And then there's always this green carpet. And it like, it's like the thinnest green carpet. And I just, I don't understand where they going for the grass look. Like, I don't, I don't know, Marcia. What was, yeah. what well, was going on with that? <laughs> in that list, I mean, add in the repurposed jars. And I mean, all of these things were really, Bart, I mean, you, you look up on the ceiling and there's a piece of wood and jar lids with the jars screwed on what? with all the little nails or tobacco tins, old tobacco tins. I've done a lot of older houses lately. And yeah. I mean, yeah. the things that we found, I mean, uh, shout out to my uh, executor team that I'm working with on the, the specific house I'm referencing. My gosh, it was like an archaeological layer by layer 
exploration of the years. This woman was meticulous in her housekeeping, but she was very frugal and she was very uh, resourceful. And she kept all kinds of really interesting stuff, stamps and, and coins and, you know, cards, different memorabilia. There was a newspaper from 1981 about, um, you know, the royal family. All kinds of interesting. I, I know somebody will be looking through all of these things and uh, just fascinating. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's really cool. Like, there's so many cool finds. And I know everybody likes to gravitate towards the North End or towards, again, West Mountain Byron and like those areas. But it's so it is beautiful. But if you are a first time home buyer, the one like the areas that I would focus on is the East End. Like it's it's emerging yeah. and you never know what you're going to get. There are so many hidden gems. One of our properties, we were ripping out a wall because we wanted to make like an open concept. We found newspapers from the 1940s and it was like all about the war and it was stuck into the walls um, because they didn't have insulation. And you're just like, like you start chipping away the laugh and plaster and you're like, whoa, like it is a time war. But yeah, I, I would say that. And then I, I found a frame of a car from, oh gosh, it was like one of the ones that you see in Great Gatsby. Like it was <laughs> so crazy. I was just like, where is all this stuff going? Like there needs to be a museum for it. Uh, some of the things that you see, I love to do like the, the fun finds when I'm showing homes. What do you yes. think is the funnest thing that you've ever found showing a home? Uh, there's been a few things. Um, I'll, I'll give you a couple of just mini examples. I uh, showed a home, uh, maybe not a good one. We found shell casings on the floor oh. of one of them. Um, we found, <laughs> and this isn't in the East End, guys. None of these are East End. Um, we found a room, concrete. It, I've been in horse stalls that were more hospitable looking. Like it was a really unusual fabricated structure in a basement with a lock on the outside of the door and scratches, one, two, three, four, five, inside. I mean, a little, we didn't buy that one. <laughs> Um, but old like antiques, um, I love people's decor. I'm such a snoop when it comes to people's decor and repurposed things. I love awesome. seeing how they reuse old items. Yeah. The books that I just sold, and I won't say the last name, but they had an old ringer washer that had been manufactured by a company bearing the same name as their own last. And I thought, this is amazing. It just, there's yeah. some really neat stuff that people put in their houses and it's gorgeous yeah my favorite thing is when people have antique um suitcases or like music cases and yeah. they use them as side tables that's probably one of my favorite oh that is gorgeous it is it is fun um I mean if we had more time we could talk about tenanted properties there's oh. there um <laughs> yeah um, I once sold a property where, again, it was, uh, I don't know, I don't understand if it's like, so if you're a tenant and you're watching this, um, making the house more messy <laughs> for the agent isn't going to guarantee your stay. You want to be on your best behavior if you want an investor to purchase this property. You don't want to, you know, have beer mids and bongs out and dirty diapers and other special intimate paraphernalia out mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i showed one here, Phil, and uh, they had relocated the contents of the cat box to the middle of the living room nice. <laughs> well guys we are going to go to break uh when we come back we're just going to do a quick recap of everything that we've been talking about thank you marcy so much for your candidness in this last little bit um and we will be right back on break soon Hey guys, if you're just joining us, you're tuning in to Agent on Duty with myself, Stacey Prier, and today I have my returning guest and personal friend, Marcia Beaton. We've been chatting all about Marcia's community initiatives, things that she does with her son um, to help support the community. We've also been talking a little bit about our fun finds as real estate agents. And now we're going to talk about real estate and restrictions. With the, the pandemic, um, it has been ongoing for some time and we do have some restrictions. So we are we have been deemed essential which is nice um and usually that does like 
that's mostly for people who absolutely have to buy or sell. Um, and right now we are experiencing a lot of restrictions. So if you are someone out there who does need to buy or sell a property, we do have proper protocols in place. So Mercy, I wanted to talk a little bit about that today. What are some of the things that you do when you list a home? Well, we definitely go over what we expect of uh, you know, the people who live there, the people who are showing the house, proper PPE, the disinfection, encouraging people not to touch any more surfaces than they require, um, and then sanitizing afterwards. Bookings are done in such a manner that they don't overlap, uh, one at a time, cleaning in between. There's, there's a fair number of changes, but they're logical and they're things that we can work around. One of the things that I've, I've personally had to struggle with is um, one of the restrictions. So basically, if anyone is a buyer and you're out there watching, um, it's not us being me. Uh, it is a restriction from our government that we are not allowed to have children in the home. So when you're purchasing a home, basically, it's only the people on title or if you're bringing an inspector through, you can do that as well. Um, but a lot of people have been struggling because they want to go see homes, but they have their children with them. And it's hard because they can't just drop them off at mom and dad's because of all the restrictions. So um, personally, what we've been doing is one parent will stay in the car and then the other parent will go through and then kind of swapping. And then some agents have even been doing the, well, if your kid wants to hang out in the parking lot, then I can keep an eye for like one of those things. But then that's when it gets a little bit dodgy, right? So um, I think that that's one of the restrictions that has been really kind of um, a struggle for a lot of people because they're like, it's my kid, but kids do crazy things and I love to run through the house. So. Video tours for these people too. So, yeah. you know, in one of the cases when we were doing the tour with the, the parents, I just used my phone and did a, a Facebook chat live with the kids. Um, and then they got to see the house while we were seeing it and ask their questions and feel involved in the process. Like there are ways to work within the confines of the rules and still accommodate people's emotions because home buying yeah. is an emotional human process. Absolutely. It could be your forever home. Maybe. Um, and then the other thing I know that we haven't been doing is open houses. So, um, and that's one of the things, again, some people are struggling with because they don't want to commit to an agent at the moment. They just want to go through and see houses because they're home. And they don't have anything to do, but <laughs> you can't do that guys. Thank you so much, Marcia, for coming on the show today. Again, it's been awesome catching up with you uh, to see what you're up to. Um, guys, if you're interested in joining in any of Marcia's community events, she does support child can. And how can they get a hold of you again? By email, it's marcia.beaton at gmail.com. Uh, phone number is 519-619-9852. And if it's too much to remember, just Google it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching and tuning into Agent on Duty. Again, with myself, Stacey Creer, and my special guest, Marcia Beaton. If you do want to get involved in any of the Child Can events, uh, you do have her uh, details. So give her a ring, and I hope you guys stay safe. We'll see you next time.